Hey, what's going on team? So I get a bunch of questions about how do I trade? Um, and I'm going to show you exactly how. Uh, so this is Roku pulling back. I'm just doing a live trade right now um, because why not, right? Um, so I'm only going to buy one contract, but uh, this is just for demonstration purposes. So Roku is pulling back. We think it's going to go up, right? So let's go ahead and pull up the chart for Roku. Oh, shoot. We just missed our entry. That's all right. All right. So what I do basically is go to the active trader tab. That's um, or the trade tab, all products, right click, copy the code here. And then I go to the active trader tab. Now, once you're on the active trader tab, you click in this box, control V enter. That's going to give you the option for the for the ticker, right? So this is the 165 calls, 58 cents. We think it's going to go up from here. So let's just go ahead and buy. Now I don't buy market normally. What I'll do is undercut the bid so it's trading at 62. Now I see it's at 56. Um, I'm gonna cut the bid down to 50, right? So we can see this place is a line on the chart where if it pulls back to this point, I'm gonna get filled. I think 50 is a bit low. Um, I actually really think that this is a great price rate. Oh, it's pulling back. I'm gonna slide this up just so we get filled. Okay, so there we are. Roku, we're filled at um, 51. Not a bad fill. We're on the dip. I like this dip buy because this was the previous high of day for Roku, right? So we've undercut the bid essentially and we've bought it on a red candle coming down. Now you notice our P&L, we're not red because we undercut the bid. We're, in fact, we're green as this is moving up. So this should, if our theory is correct, this should hold as a support and we shouldn't go red. Um, it's pulling back here on lower volume and Roku has been pretty strong all day. It's also into a gap area. So this should hold. Um, if it doesn't, I'll show you what I do. But immediately after entering this trade, what I do normally is set my profit target. So at 51, our entry, um, we should be looking, you know, we want to get 20% on our trade. So we know we want to sell around 61. So I'll go ahead and set my sell order at 61. Um, for me, I think that that's a little low. I think, the, and it's because it's, you know, zero dates, days to expiration, 10 July, today's 10 July. I think we can get more than 20% off this trade. So I'm going to slide this up to maybe 0. Uh, 70. That's right around high of day. Um, so you see we're up 2% now on the trade. We bought it on a dip. Looking good for us, right? At this point, all I need to do is manage my winner. So as it's moving up, you know, I just still have my sell order set. I can, I can change this to an OCO bracket and set a stop loss order, but I don't need to do that. See, there's 23% right there. Just like that, right, we could have sold for 23%. Um, but I'm still, I'm still explaining this trade, so I'm just gonna let it ride. Uh, so yeah, what we can do instead of setting this sell order here, like it's, let's say it didn't hold this as a support, right? It didn't validate that as a support, um, and it starts coming back on us. I'll cancel that sell order, and I'll start to look to set a stop loss order. And so that's just saying, you know, if it breaks below this support point and, and gets down to this point, it's gonna stop us out. Now. If I see that it's that it's trailing up and I just want to let this run, I can change that to an OCO bracket. So usually what I'll do is single sell my contract, the bulk of my contracts. Let's say I bought like, you know, normally I'd be buying probably 10 or 15 of these. Um, let's say I bought 10 or 15 of them and, uh, and, and, and then it pushes up to 20% like it just did. I would have probably sold half or three quarters of the position on a single sell order at 20%. And then what I'll do is set an OCO bracket. So you click on template, OCO, mark price. Um, and, and then you can set this offset to anything you want, either a stop or a trail stop. And what I like about this is that, you know, now I can set my sell order up here and my stop order is down below here. Okay, see we're up 23% again. But I can also adjust this too. This is This doesn't have to be a hard stop. So 0.54, we're actually still green on the trade. We'd be up $3. So if it pulls back to 0.54, we get stopped out. 
should be green. Usually it's a market sell, so you're gonna get filled a little lower. So we'll probably wind up break even on this trade. In fact, it looks like it's about to do that now. So I'm gonna move that down so we don't get stopped out. I'm basing, now I can see that when I move my order down, rather than basing this off a of percentage, you know, 51 to 42, um, I think that's, that's a pretty big percentage. Yeah, that's 20%. For some of your guys' accounts, that might be too much. But if we base that off, if we move this down, we're basing that off the chart. You see, so now this is how you, you can base your contract price off the chart rather than um, off the percentage that you're up or down. Does that make sense? So you can play with these um, however you want. I think I'm gonna go ahead and sell this one order and take my $10, 20% here if I get filled. It's right at 62, we're trading at 61. Um, but that's how you can adjust the orders. That is normally how I take my positions, my, enter, my entries and my exits. You know, just undercut the bid on the way down, right? We bought it down here. Well, not down here. We actually, you know, we bought it at 61, but we bought it on the way down so that now we're, we're green on the trade. We were, I don't even think we were red on this trade, um, at least not reflected down here unless I missed it. But um, yeah, I mean, this is a great way to, it sounds counterintuitive, but it's a great way to trade because then you're not really ever worried. There we go, we got filled. Um, and all, all together on the day, we're up $529. But uh, yeah, um, I, I kind of lost my train of thought there. They, that fill distracted me. If you guys have any questions though, you can always ask. And, I, and I'm not normally doing this on the um, the uh, on this active trader tab right here like this. You can do it this way. I have two thinkorswim platforms pulled up. So what I'll do is, you know, I'm, I'm watching like all of these charts at once. So I'll have, I'll have my active trader pulled up on one thinkorswim, all my charts pulled up on another, and usually whatever ticker that we're watching for the trade, I'll have like multiple, uh, I'll have multiple screens for charts pulled up, and then I'll have different time frames. You know, so like we just took that entry on the one minute chart, figuring that it would hold this level of support. You could do the same with the five minute chart. Um, either way, whatever your preference is, I prefer that you guys actually trade with the five, five minute chart because the one minute chart, you know, unless you're experienced, um, there's a lot of fake outs that can happen based on the one minute chart time frame. So I'd recommend using the, uh, the five minute chart time frame if you are a beginner, unless you know what you're doing. Cool guys. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I hope that this has helped clear some stuff up for you. As always, if you haven't done so, done so already, please like and subscribe and I'll see you guys all in chat. Thanks.